fact, I've been working on this for a couple of years, really investigating are we delivering the business side of education in the most economical way? And have come to the conclusion <laughs> we're not. Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Senator Bonhoeff is a stupendous state senator out of Senate District 43, which is parts of Minnetonka, Medicine Lake, and Plymouth. I suspect that you're uh, glad to be out of session. I am relieved to be out of session. You are right about that. You know, I think there isn't a legislator who served that didn't walk away feeling a sense of incompletion. Like, in a way, we were not able to get our job done. Do you think that the uh, DFL uh, got out strategized by Governor Plenty in this unallotment game? I don't like to look at the work that I do as a game. And so I'm just... Unallotment game. <laughs> I know, but I, I'm just going to say that if we step back from that, and I don't answer that question directly, what I will say is that I don't think that we ended up serving the people of Minnesota to allow ourselves to have that be the solution. You know, I'm one who says... Each one of us has a responsibility in how it turned out, and so I take responsibility, but I think it wasn't a good outcome. It wasn't a good outcome for the people, and that's what counts. What would have been a good outcome? Some sort of compromise? A good outcome would have been if we had been able, early on, to sit down with the governor and have a strategy for how we were going to close the budget gap. $6.4 billion? Right, and you know, it didn't stay 6.4 because, as you recall, we first, you know, heard the forecast and got word of the forecast before the stimulus package was released. And so um, shortly after being told we had this huge shortfall, we began hearing that we were going to get a sizable infusion from the federal government. And frankly, I think that changed everything. So if you're going to call the game, I would say that changed the game. And if I seem sensitive about calling it that, it's because I was very frustrated by all of our lawmakers' unwillingness to um, take care of the people of Minnesota and find a way to solve the problem. Does that extend across the board? It does. Really? You know, I really think so. I think that each one of us has to look in the mirror, and unless we're willing to do that, then we ought not to serve. And I don't think we did the job in the Senate. I don't think we did the job in the House, and I certainly don't think the governor got the job done. How is it that Minnesota... Uh, for the last eight years seems to have a perennial problem matching money with uh, expenditures. I think that the way we deliver government is um, something that hasn't been re-examined in keeping with what technology affords us in today's terms. And so um, while our problems have gotten bigger, given the complexities in our society, given the breakdown of the family, given the diversity in our population, we haven't used what's available from a technological perspective, from a systems perspective, from a how you run an organization perspective, to re-engineer the way we deliver government. And so we continue to deliver government in the same old fashion with very complicated and growing problems. It doesn't have to be that way. I took a strong stand in the beginning of the legislative session and said every state agency should re-examine their business practices. We should, you know, break down the walls. We should reorganize. You talk about, you know, best practices at General Mills or at um, Cargill or at <clears throat> any major corporation. And every, you know, what, five, ten years, they go through a re-engineering process, so to speak. So we haven't done that as a state. You know, we've got all these agencies. They overlap. They provide similar services, and we have not re-engineered them. We haven't said, where do they um, have a crossover? Where do cities, counties, and schools provide the same thing? Now, I know you have an abiding interest in education issues. Did you take this... Uh, mindset that you've just described and attempt to do something in the legislature relative to education this last session? I did. 
and um, you know that ruffled feathers. In fact, I've been working on this for a couple of years, um, really investigating are we delivering the business side of education in the most economical way? And have come to the conclusion <laughs> we're not. You know, when you have 360 school districts and every school district has their own dispatcher for transportation and has their own human resources. Let's stop right there. Do okay. we need 360 school districts in the state? Here's the thing. I wasn't yet willing to say no because we haven't examined it. But I would start with because in every small town, the heart of that town is their school. So I don't start with, we have too many school districts. What I start with is, where can we leverage the power of shared services to take costs out so we can preserve the autonomy of the local school district? And you know what? The lobbyists, the school groups, not the parents, but the outside people said, absolutely not. Don't do that to us. Mm. I um, introduced this whole concept at a joint press conference with the governor because the governor was um, working on a similar project and when he heard that it's actually Ryan Winkler and I, Ryan from the House, mm -hmm. were working on this, he offered to work with us and so we did a, a press conference, the three of us, to introduce this initiative. The Senate was very open to this initiative. We passed it all the way through, it passed off the Senate floor, mm. but we were not able to get the House to do it, mm. even though the governor and the Senate mm. felt strongly about it. So. Those kinds of things, and I'm not saying this was everything, but I'm saying this was just one example of where significant reforms were introduced that would have helped balance the structural deficit over time and we weren't able to move forward. Do you think the time will come for that type of legislation? Yes. You can't mm -hmm. give up. You know, Steve Murphy got his primary seatbelt law passed after <clears throat> 17 years. And Steve shares my office. Mm -hmm. um, we both share an office suite. And I thought, you know, if he can work on something for 17 years, well, then I better not complain if this is my third year and this is the first year I've actually introduced the initiative. Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Norbert Gurness, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on our website, dflsd42.org.